accuracy is paramount. Printers were called the aristocrats of labour. They were all highly literate, they served a long apprenticeship and they were also correspondingly very well paid. The first stage of printing is composing. The type is set, backwards of course, as it's a mirror image, on this stick. The font of type is in this, a case, contains the upper and lower cases. The capital letters are arranged alphabetically. The lower case letters are arranged according to usage. Right in the middle where you want them or you have your most used letters. And that gives rise to the expression to mind your P's and Q's. Because when you're working backwards, a P and a Q will look the same. So that's why you have to be careful. The faster you composed, the more you were paid. Newspaper compositors could do over 2,000 letters an hour, for which they were paid 25 shillings. For each mistake you made, though, you were fined one whole shilling. Thank you very much. Next, all the composed letters were bound together in a frame and wedged tightly into place before being taken to the press. At the beginning of the 19th century, presses were made of iron and were worked by hand. But it was time to invest in some brand new technology. Like all industry in the mid 19th century, power driven was the thing, and printing was no exception. Frederick Koenig, a German, invented the first power press. This is a wharf from 1863 and embodies the same principles. The form passes underneath on the bed, backwards and forwards, in the same way as a hand press. But the paper goes on a cylinder. It's a cylinder press. It's much much quicker. These steam powered presses were entirely automatic, except for feeding the paper in. And the next stage was electrically powered presses, like this Heidelberg. Engage the drive. One of the very cunning things about this press is that down there is a suction pump, so we no longer have to feed the paper by hand. But the most exciting thing is this has a variable drive. So if I wind this handle, it can speed up. Heidelbergs were so effective that some British newspapers were still being printed on them in the 1980s. German efficiency. But these fast mechanical presses showed up just how slow composing was. And it took a bit of German know-how to solve that problem as well. This marvellous contraption is a linotype machine. It was invented in 1879 by a man rejoicing in the name of Ottmar Mergenthaler. And it was he who finally solved the problem of making a compositing machine. At the top of the linotype is a bank of matrices brass moulds for casting letters of type. They fall down into the machine when you type the letters you want on the keyboard. Then, pushing this lever sets off the casting process. Inside, hot lead is poured into the moulds, allowed to cool and spat out at the bottom as a slug of type. The story goes that he was demonstrating it to an American press baron called Whitelaw Reed. Megan Tyler pressed the keys on the machine and when the slug came out, Reed apparently said, Otmar, you said a line of type, and the name stuck. <laughs>